So I, I was watching the show last night, Saturday night, actually, I watched it. And the one thing that really occurs to me is that there's a lot going on within the show. Because it's about so many different things. Mm-hmm. It's about living in a small town. In many ways, it's about transgender issues. In many ways, it's a, it's a crime drama. In many ways, it's about religion. In many ways, it's about family. Like, at its core, what do you think the show's about? I mean, at its core, it's a human drama. You know, the, the kind of some of the more flashy sort of aspects of it and, you know, the sort of the mystery and the crime and the whatever are, are the backdrop for it. But ultimately it becomes very much an exploration of these people and their choices and their relationships yeah. and, you know, how, you know, the actions that they take have consequences over many, many years. And it's a it's more of a character piece, really, in a lot of ways, but dressed up in a kind of exciting slight you know suspenseful scary spooky mm-hmm. way um with a, as you said those other elements you know the obviously like the church plays a huge role in it and the the political issues surrounding people's various responses to uh the Jesse character being a transgendered mm-hmm. teenager you know being the sort of both the hockey star and the transgender kid you know that sort of confuses a lot of the the town uh, yeah. small minds. Yeah. It's heartening to hear you say that it's a human drama because at the end of it, like, I was able to follow the the mystery, but I was almost more interested in your character because you come across as this kind of brazen, tough, confident mm-hmm. character, but also there are moments where you're very tender and, mm-hmm. and, and very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of different emotions to portray in one character. But that's actual real life. Yeah, is is that what appealed to you about yeah, him? Yeah, you know, it's it's the it's the full range of of human emotion and its complexity and it's not tidy, it's not neat. And uh and Annie is anything but your sort of typical, you know, female protagonist. She's mm-hmm. her life is messy and uh and so is she. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and all of that um very, very appealing to me, you know, and also it's very, very well written. Yeah, it certainly is. It's very, very well written. Jane Maggs is a wonderful, young, talented, kick-ass female writer. From? Uh, Newfoundland. There we go. There we are. Nice nice part of the country there. I want to point that out. Shout out. I was going to say, I think she's a little, like, you know, preferential. (laughs) To the Newfoundlanders. I'll take it. Uh, You're listening to Q. My name is Tom Power. I'm here with Anna Paquin, who's talking about how her crime series, Bellevue, tackles a lot of different issues like gender identity and, and suicide, but it's ultimately a, a human story. I, I have some other questions for you just about Go you. I know that the Oscars are this month, and, right. and, and you were 11 when you won your Oscar. I was. Do you still think about that moment? I mean, when people like you ask me about it, I do. I guess I was thinking when I was 11 years old, no matter how cool the thing that it was happened to me, I probably don't remember it. And it was just kind of a blur of, of being 11. Like, I didn't necessarily want you to like take me back to that moment. but does... No, but literally I get asked about it and therefore I think about it. But I don't really <laughs> – of my, I don't like kind of sit around and go, hmm. Yeah. But I'd, I'd just be surprised if you could remember it at all. Of course I remember it. I mean, yeah. I can remember being like three, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, – uh, but it's one of those things that, you know, if you've looked at like a family photo album and at a certain point, like, do I really remember it or I just remember it because I know the stories and mm-hmm. I've looked at the pictures, they're kind of, it kind of takes on its own life in a way, mm-hmm. you know, and for me, I was, you know, it was just, that was what happened to me as a small kid, does, you know? Does it feel like someone else won it? No, but it's a long time ago. I mean, but it's pretty it's remarkable. It, it's very. You understand statistic- what, it is very statistically unlikely. You, yeah, you understand why people keep asking about <laughs> oh, it. Oh no, I get that because it's kind of crazy. It's a little nuts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I get that. It's just you know, it becomes something that it takes on its own kind of life outside of just being this very strange and kind of wonderful thing that happened to me like two decades ago. But I guess the reason I bring it up is because. Uh, actors who achieve a lot of fame when they're around or 10 or 11 years old, you don't often see them keeping going. Usually they'll they'll kind of drop burn out, out around 16 or 17. They might burn <laughs> out. Yeah, you might read a lot of headlines about them for about three weeks. You are uh, an instance where you had a lot of success, unbelievable success really, as a as a child actor. And you've consistently 
made made films and made television since of a very very high quality. Thank you. What do you think separates you from? I know, I know, but like, can you can you theorize as to why you turned out this way and other child actors didn't? Um, I mean, ultimately, no, because no. if there was a formula for you know succeeding in life, everyone would have it. You know, they'd hand mm-hmm. it out with your SAG card <laughs> <laughs> and the manual about kitty working hours. Yeah. Um, my family life was very not swayed by the kind of acting industry thing of it all. That wasn't, you know, it was something I was allowed to do if I was still doing well in school and it wasn't like in any way negatively impacting my life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was important in, in, in my family. And, you know, the, the career was something that I was allowed to do if everything else was sort of, you know, yeah. being taken care of. And do you do your homework or you won't get to star in this movie? Well, you know, do well in school yeah, and, course. you know, mm-hmm. get into university and actually, like, you know, have other things in my life that were still important and maintained. And that's just the way my family was, you know. So maybe not everybody has that luxury of being, you know, being brought into this industry with a very protective home crowd. I think as a parent, anyone makes decisions for their kids. You know, if something a little bit out of the out of the normal path comes along, you know, you weigh it up and is this going to be a positive thing in my kid's life or a negative thing, you know? And while it was a positive thing, yeah, I was allowed to do it. You said in the past, and I was reading quotes of yours, that, you know, your job has been your life. You have, 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 quote, almost to a fault in the past, prioritized work over everything. That was before I had kids. Is that so? <laughs> yeah. What, what changes there? Well, I want to raise my children, and obviously I have to work to do that. So I'm, 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 not, I'm not a parent. I don't, I don't know yet what that feels like to have. Is it, was it, is it an overnight thing that you go from work, well, work is everything? Well, I think it's also an age thing. You know, you, I think when you're a teenager or, like, in your early 20s, you kind of have the luxury of being slightly more self-absorbed and, you know, yeah, selfish. Yeah, yeah sure. um, Ultimately, you know, once you're a parent or an adult, mm-hmm. <laughs> or a real adult, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of should be looking out for other people around you as well. You know, it's not all about you all the time. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a hard lesson for a lot of people. Well... They should have some kids. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that's maybe that's the issue. So, but you know, because because you, you do focus so much on your work and you are making this, does that make work, working with your husband a necessity? Not a necessity, but it's certainly a luxury that, that I so? yeah that I I mean we met working together, so we had this incredibly sweet ride for seven years where that was our that was our reality. You know we you know and that was when we got married and started a family and. The whole True Blood kind of community was a family anyway, so it was all very kind of warm and cozy. So the last few years since the show's been done, you know, going off and doing stuff on our own, like, it's fine, but we like working together. We're very happy. Over 20 years, and for someone of, of who's, who's not that old, that, that's, that's a remarkable length of a career. <laughs> it really is, because not many people have the perspective that you have at the age that you are. Because typically people who are 20 years into the business are, are you know, are 40, late, they're 40, late 40s, 50, 60 years old. You have a, a unique perspective, and I wanted to take advantage of it a little bit. Like, what has been the biggest change you've seen in the, in the film and television industry from when you started until now? Well, the reality is, is that I didn't really have any perspective on it when I started. Mm-hmm. It was a completely foreign world to me that I just sort of got invited into, Mm -hmm. but didn't have a sort of outside of self-conscious awareness of it in any way. So as far as how it's changed, I mean, a lot of that also, you know, I was a child and then a teenager and then a Mm -hmm. young adult. Now, an adult, adult. (laughs) (laughs) A real adult, I believe you said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A real adult. Uh Um, So as far as how things have changed or whatever, also, I've changed a lot, you know, so I don't really have a – maybe in 20 years' time I'll be able to look back and kind of go, oh, that was this phase of our business or whatever. But I don't really feel like I have the objectivity about such a big chunk of my my life to 
really have a great answer for that. Um, but what I, what I find really interesting about that is that that's kind of been the theme of this conversation is that these, these kind of broad sweeping analysis that people do of their careers, you seem to be just focused on the next thing you have to do. Yeah. What, what do you attribute that to? Where does that come from? Um, I don't know. That's just sort of how I've lived my life. You know, and I think that anyone who is trying to pursue a career in any sort of creative or artistic way, you can either, I mean, you ultimately don't know when your next job is going to be, right. really, ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, even if you're very successful, very talented, whatever, you know, things, dry spells happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I just sort of don't choose to dwell on that sort of aspect of it. So the kind of in the moment thing is what's always been the, I think, healthiest way for me to approach it. Because I know a lot of people get very concerned about, oh my God, I'm never going to work again. I'm never going to work again. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's quite easy to go into that dark yeah. hole if you have a little like, you know, a few disappointments in the row. But yeah. I think it's, for me, it's easier to just kind of see what comes, see what happens, see what opportunities come your way and to try to enjoy them for what they are as opposed to going, well, well, it wasn't this or it wasn't big enough or special enough or, you know, it's like, well, it, it is what it is and you can enjoy it or not and it's kind of up to you. And it, it, that's a very inspiring thing to hear and uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks for talking to me. Thank you for having me.